Hi, I'm Mike the Grizzly. Now, I'm not an historian or an archaeologist, but I do tend to carry out a lot of historical research as a graphic artist, 3D CGI developer, and documentary video maker. During the course of 2014, I'm gathering material for a project I'm working on to produce an independent video production entitled The Salt Revolution. Richard Trevithick, born in Tregeduron, Cornwall in 1771. He became a British mining engineer and inventor. He was the first to develop a high-pressure steam engine and the first to build a full-scale working railway steam locomotive. All modern day working reproductions and museum exhibits of Trevithick steam locomotives are based on a few known surviving drawings, in particular the 1804 Penadaran and the 1805 Wylam Colliery models. I created this CGI model from a set of drawings from this website and which are downloadable as a PDF file. In spite of not being a steam engineer, or for that matter an enthusiast, as part of the main salt revolution production, I am keen to learn about the early development of steam engines and how they were literally the driving force behind the industrial revolution. So let's start by looking into the belly of the beast. And what we see is boiling water and pressurized steam. Hidden within is a horizontal steel tube and a sealed steel tank. This tank is known as the firebox and it does exactly what it says on the tin. Inside is where coal is burned that heats up the box which in turn boils the water and generates the steam. However there is a little bit more to its design. The burning coal or fuel is contained within its own compartment and rests upon a metal grate through which the ash falls. The hot air and smoke is drawn through the firebox and up into the chimney stack. Above the firebox we can see this horizontal cylinder and if we have a look inside that... Now as I've already mentioned, I'm not a steam engineer and while the plans for this engine are top notch Clearly naming each piece and giving a broad outline of the overall mechanics involved, I did have some fun reverse engineering this section for demonstration purposes. So let's take a closer look. This is a cylinder and valve chamber. It has a sealed plug at this end which also rests in the cylinder support bracket. Let's also put this part in cross section so we can see it all. This divider splits the tube into two sections, the piston cylinder and the valve chamber. Here we have the piston head, firmly connected to the piston rod which runs through the centre of the structure. And here we have the valve which, if you watch my other video on the Newcomen and Watt steam engines, you'll notice is actually a more refined version of the plug tree. The valve is already shown here in cross section and we can see that it has a central bore of the same diameter as a piston rod. However, it also has a core bore of a slightly larger diameter. And that accommodates this raised collar which is fixed firmly to the piston rod. Well those are the main components, now let's see it in action.
That's all well and good, but it's missing something. Steam. Like most things under pressure, steam is desperate to find an escape route. And our cylinder actually provides it with the start of one. But it's one which compels the steam to follow a course of Trevithick's design. Here we can see a series of coloured tubes attached to the cylinder. Now I've arranged these slightly different for the purpose of this demonstration, but technically they're in the correct positions. Here we have our active steam inlet pipe. Now I've colour coded the active steam as being blue. And then we have the exhaust steam out pipe. And again, given that colour coding of mauve. Now I found there's a trick to following this. Here, active steam is constantly flooding into the tail section of the valve chamber. And in the midsection of the valve, exhaust steam is finding its way out of the chamber. So let's just watch that bit in action for the moment. Now there's still a lot going on here. But we can see that it's the backwards and forwards movement of the valve which is controlling the alternating flow of steam through the piston cylinder. Let's take a closer look. With the valve in this position, active steam can't escape through this tube because it's blocked by the head of the valve. But it can escape through this tube and begins to flood into the head section of the piston cylinder. Meanwhile, the way is now open for the exhaust steam in the tail section of the piston cylinder to be expelled to the valve's exhaust chamber and finally out through the exhaust pipe. With the valve now in this position, the configuration has changed. Furthermore, a space has been created between the head of the valve and the cylinder divider. A space into which active steam can now flood into through this unblocked tube, where it finds it also has an exit route through this tube into the tail section of the piston cylinder. Meanwhile, the state of this tube has now changed to allow exhaust steam to be expelled to the valve's exhaust section and finally out through the exhaust pipe. And that basically describes one cycle of Richard Trevithick's pressurised steam locomotive engine. And as for the exhaust steam, well that finally escapes up the chimney stack along with the smoke from the firebox. Richard Trevithick died penniless in 1833.